Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with some more of Gideon and more of Judges chapter 6. We're going to start off with verse 25. Now it came to pass the same night that the Lord said to him, Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has, and cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. Are you picking up on a pattern here? Are you sensing something that you've seen several times before? God calls someone to do something, and they're called, and they know it's God, and they know they're called of God, and they are a servant of God. And they are then called to clean up the crap that's in their lives. There was an altar to another god on their property. Did Gideon worship it with his father? We don't know. Did he have anything to do with it? We don't know. But we're told that he needs to destroy it. So I'm going to assume that Gideon had some part in that altar, whether he just lived there, whether he actively worshipped it. Don't know. But he had to get rid of it. It had to leave his life in order for him to continue. And... Also, another thing that's really interesting, the signs that Gideon saw that like boosted his faith and convinced him. So we've got three signs here. One, you are, well, if you are a church type goer, you've almost definitely heard of it. The other one, I don't know if I've ever really heard this one in church. I might have, but not nearly as much as the second one. So let's start off with, we're going to go back up to verse 17. So he's just been told, you'll defeat the Midianites. I'm with you. You're a mighty man of valor. Then he, Gideon, said to him, God, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring out my offering and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. So Gideon went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket, and he put the broth in a pot, and he brought them out to him under the terebinth tree, and presented them. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, and lay them on this rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand, and touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire rose out of the rock, and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread. And the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is peace. Yahweh Shalom. To this day it is still an Ophrah of the Abizrites. And then the verse I read before. And I'll say I almost I was I almost want to leave out the second one the second sign I really shouldn't leave that out even if y'all have heard of it jump down to verse thirty six so Gideon said to God if you will save Israel by my hand as you have said look I shall put a fear a fleece of wool on the threshing floor if there is dew on the fleece only and it is dry on all the ground then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand as you have said because the first sign wasn't enough right. The angel of the Lord appearing to him face to face, extending out his hand and the rod and the offering being burnt up from a rock out of nothing. That A little bit more. And, and what did God do? And it was, verse 38, and it was so. When he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece together, he wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. Then Gideon said to God, do not be angry with me, but let me speak just once more. Let me test, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, but on all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night. It was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on all the ground. I can't say a word. I've had severe lack of faith moments in my life. I still have them, like to this day. Maybe not necessarily today, but at some point in the recent past, I've had some critical like thought process, you know, well, what if God's not with me? What if God's not there? What if I'm not doing the thing I'm supposed to do? We humans run into doubt a lot, a whole lot. And face-to-face -face encounter with God, you might think once is enough. It's not. The Israelites proved that over and over again with their unrepentance. They had a 
pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and they still were bowed down to a golden calf when Moses was gone for 40 days on top of the mountain. With all the thunder and lightning and trumpets at sound, and man is still coming down every day. And so many people tend to think, man, those Israelites were so stupid. How much does it take? Guys, I would like to submit to you, we are also that stupid. We need just as many signs as Gideon and the other Israelites did because we're pretty simple people. We fail a whole lot. We all get a big old L slapped on our head. I hope that's showing up right on the camera. We all get that. And praise God, he is very gracious, loving, and forgiving to us in the middle of our stupidity and sinfulness. He's awesome. We're not. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you guys. God bless.